Hey guys, it's me, Mr. 250, and welcome back to Umineko. It's been a month, over a month actually now, since we last uh, did some stuff. Well, since we last did the main, the main game. And now we can finally get started with episode 8. Twilight of the Golden Witch. Good morning, this, this, this farewell is sad for me as it is for you. I prepared a goodbye party for tonight. A game tournament will be included as well, so feel free to participate. The difficulty is small, but not to be trifled with. Why don't you try joining in, now, at the end? Don't worry guys. Kinzo isn't real. Your children are safe. Two silhouettes could be seen in the chapel. A big brother and his little sister. The big brother who had never returned from that day 12 years in the past. And the little sister who waited all alone 12 years in the future. However, the big brother knew everything, understood everything. And the little sister knew nothing, understood nothing. So no matter how much time passed, the little sister remained as the girl she had been 12 years before. She remained a six-year-old girl forever. Her sobs into her big brother's chest finally subsided. She quietly waited for his next words. After patting her head gently, the big brother fished around inside his shirt pocket. Then he took that out. Battler took a large key attached to a necklace out of his pocket, then held it out to Angie. It was large enough to cover Battler's entire palm. And little Angie probably wouldn't even be able to wrap her hand all the way around it. The key glittered gold and had a beautiful, intricate design. Its weight alone made it clear that this key was something very important. Battler put the necklace around Angie's neck. Look at little Angie, she's so cute. Of course she didn't have a clue what Battler was saying. But she did realize that he was telling her to take good care of this key. So Angie nodded, at least in response to that part. In her hand, the key had felt heavy. However, now that it was around her neck, it felt as light as an ordinary necklace. How strange. She had been sure that her brother was about to sit down. Just a second ago, he had said that he'd tell her what happened on Rokinjima that day. She had thought that he would tell her here. お兄ちゃんがそれを聞かせてくれるんじゃないの聞かせるとも話してエンジェに聞かせるでもそれはエンジェにはただ話を聞いているだけには感じられないかもしれないそれはどういうことエンジェが本当に望んでいるのはあの日あの島で会ったこと知りたいんじゃない 
So, he does understand after all. What happened on that island that day? Trying to answer that question was all I was capable of, so I wished for nothing more. But, if I could, I'd want to go there. To that island. On that day. To Rokinjima on the day I couldn't go. To the Ushiramiya family mansion. Mom and Dad. All of the cousins. All the relatives. And everyone else. I want to go back to that island on that day. So I've always remained the way I was on that day. My heart and soul stopped. Stuck as a six-year-old's forever. だから招くことにしたんだ。え、お兄ちゃんはもうゲーム版のすべてを知る者だけがゲーム版を開き、駒を招くことができる。だから俺はエンジェをゲーム版へ招待する。Oh, it's so kind. You let her watch your family get murdered. あの日のロッケン島へ連れて行ってくれるの。ああ。エンジェを。1986年のロッケン島へ。会えるの。みんなに。もちろん。私。もう記憶もおぼろげで。みんなの顔はっきりと思い出せないのにすぐに思い出すさそしてエンジェにとっては12年ぶりの再会でも俺たちにとっては、しばらくぶりでしかないんだ。みんな歓迎する。12年の遠い未来からようやく帰ってきた
私が選ぶのそうだよそのための鍵がそれなんだよバトルタッチデグリリンキーダッハンフォーマンチーズナーク私の答えはもう決まってるよ今は選ばなくていい選ぶべき時はすぐに訪れるからその時のエンジェの素直な心でその鍵をどう使うか選びなさい、うん、お兄ちゃんの言うことなんか何も聞かなくてもいいエンジェのわがままなように答えを決めても構わないでももしもエンジェがいい子でお兄ちゃんを信用できるなら信用できるならお兄ちゃんの言うことはすべて信じなさいすべて信じるそれがエンジェにとって一番いい選択になるからお兄ちゃんの言葉に耳を傾けそしてできるかいわかんないそれでもいい信じたいものだけを信じればいいそれもエンジが決めていいんだよお兄ちゃんを信じないとこの夢は覚めてしまうのそんなことはないだから安心していいよ For some reason, Angie was suspicious of her brother and scared of him. Her wish was to remain on that island on that day together with her family forever. She was afraid that once she got her two miraculous days and accepted them, her brother might tell her to return to 12 years in the future all alone. <laughs> それもエンジェが決めるそしてそれは今すぐ決めなくていいそのどちらかの選択を誰も強要しないもちろんお兄ちゃんは私に未来へ帰れなんて言わないお兄ちゃんはエンジェに選んでほしいある選択があるそれもエンジェが自発的に選んでくれることを望んでるだから望んではいるがエンジェの選択は尊重したい私もさっき言った私の答えはもう決まっているよ俺もさっき言った今はそれを選択する時じゃないそれはいつその鍵がいずれ教えてくれるよ The large gold key hung from Angie's neck Her small hand held it tightly At that moment she noticed a book lying on the chapel's altar The book had a lock on it and it was sealed so that it could not be read without a key Angie looked between the key hanging at her chest and the book on the altar. His sudden forceful response made Angie flinch. Battler, realizing he had scared Angie, softened his expression. エンジェを招待するよ。うん。That's not Maria's book, is it? Battler held out his hand and Angie gripped it tightly. Then they started walking. A brilliant light lay beyond the chapel door. That blinding light peeked in through the cracks around the door. The brother and sister began to walk through to the other side.
おかえりエンジェそしてこれで最後なんだがこのゲーム版をエンジェのために最後にもう一度だけ言って。I just know this isn't going to happen. Thanks. I just know this isn't going to have a happy ending. So I'm kind of wondering what Battler hopes to achieve here. Once again, Captain Kawabata's ferry boat to Rokinjima cut across the sea in perfect form. Yes. The tale of October 4th, 1986 always begins with battle screams. But this time, one thing was different. There was another person's yell alongside Battler. Battler was screaming. The other was laughing. <laughs> so I'm guessing Angie's not sick this time? Alongside the big brother who was grasping at the handrail and screaming in a way no one that age should scream, was the little sister also grasping the handrail and jumping about like it was a ride at an amusement park. George and the others just couldn't hold in their laughter at the difference. ロクネンを経ても、バトラ君は本当に賑やかだね。エンジェもマリアも今年は一際賑やかだぜ。いとこ五人が全員揃うのってひょっとしてこれが初めて？俺そうかな。なるほどね。今年はこれまでになく最高
<笑>一人だけ留守番じゃ気の毒だしね無理にでも連れてきてよかったぜ直前に大きく体調を崩したって聞いてたけれど。そうだね。ケサになったらケロリよ。子供って本当にすごいわ。緊張が体調に出るタ
look at how energetic this day had become. This feels somewhat unrelated to the rest of the stories thus far. Just sort of like a what-if situation. ご到着いたしました。はい。荷物をお借りましたら、こちらへ挨拶に来られるとのことです。わかりました。カノンは皆さんのご案内を。シャノンは紅茶の準備を急ぐように。かしこまりました。奥様。お父さん、クラウスです。そろそろご準備をお願いします。マンフェイクファーザー。After well, you know, he, he, he's dead. Not too well. もう着替えておりますわ。ただ少し緊張されているようですな。誰が緊張しているというのか。お気に入りの肩よくのネクタイピンが見つからぬ。だからいつも夏木に行っているのだ。<笑> Apparently, Kinza is not dead. I'm guessing Battle had something to do with that. Kinza had been running around for some time just because he couldn't decide on a tie and a tie pin. Kinza, who felt that the dignity of the family head must always be preserved, usually made a big deal about the head's attire being equally dignified. なんとか乗りそうですかの。もうしばらく時間をいただけますかな。準備ができたら下へ参りますので。わかりました。南城先生、よろしくお願いします。お父さん、そのネクタイピンでもよく似合っていますよ。そのネクタイピンとは何か、